Pô, rapaziada, antes do vídeo começar, se inscreva no canal, ative as notificações, curta, comenta e compartilha bastante, beleza? Todos os vídeos são editados por mim, beleza? Uma edição bem simples, bem básica, mas espero que vocês gostem, tá bom? Então é isso, valeu, muito obrigado e sem mais enrolação, fiquem com o vídeo. Yo, first question is, are you okay? Uh, yeah, I think it's a question I've definitely been asked a lot. Um, but I think this is probably the first time in a long time that I can say yeah, like, and mean it, I think. I'm probably in the mentally I'm probably in the best place I've ever been. Uh it's now's probably yeah. the right time for me to to tell people what's been going on. Uh it's tough to talk about it because it's it's quite recent. Um and it's something I've kind of hid for a long time. Uh and I'm scared, I'm scared to talk about it, but I think it's the right thing to do. So when I come back from Turkey, I came in and I found out I needed an operation and I was in a I was in a bad place um mentally and yeah I decided to go to like a a modern day rehab facility for mental health uh, they deal with like addiction mental health and trauma because it was something that uh I felt like it was time for me I think with things like that you can't be told to go there I think you have to know and you have to make the decision yourself else it's not going to work and yeah I was just to be honest I was caught in a in a bad cycle um you know i was relying on things that were doing me harm and yeah i think i was waking up every day and i was winning the fight you know going into training smiling showing that i was happy but inside i was definitely you know losing the battle and it was time for me to to change it because when i got injured and he told me i needed surgery i could feel the the feelings i had when the cycle begins and i didn't want it to happen anymore so I went there, I went there for six weeks um, and, you know, Everton were amazing about it. You know, they supported me 100% and I'll be grateful for them forever. I think whatever happens in the future, I think for them to be so open and honest and understanding, I think I couldn't have asked for anything more in that time when, you know, I was probably making the biggest decision of my life. Um, something I was scared to do, I think, but I'm happy I've done it and to be honest, I couldn't have expected it to go the way it did, I think. Before, you know, you hear about it, it has this whole stigma around it, and it's something people don't want to do. Um, you know, going into rehab, it definitely sounds scary. But yeah, I could never have imagined how much I'd get from it and how much it would help me mentally, because um, I was in a bad place. I think, you know, a lot happened when I was younger that I could never understand, I could never figure out, and I was doing stupid things that I blame myself for. But really going there and learning about it, it was never really in my control. Understanding it and learning, and it's helped me a lot with other things, you know, to do with my fam, like my blood family. Uh, I let go of some, some things and some bad feelings I was holding, and that would slow me down and hold me back, so. <laughs> Just on the timeline, how recent was this that you went into rehab? So I got, I got out three weeks ago, I think. Uh, oh, that recent? Three weeks ago, yeah. And if I'm being honest, I probably wouldn't have wanted to talk about it this soon. I think maybe give it a little bit more time, but I am feeling in a really good place and I feel strong enough to do this. I think it's important. Maybe could have done with a little bit more time in terms of when I was talking about it, but unfortunately the way the world is now, you know, the tabloids that they got, they found out and they was calling my team a lot and they were telling, you know, that they knew where I was and stuff. And the decision that I maybe made in the past where I didn't really care about what people thought and I didn't care about being understood. I would have just let them write what they wanted to write and you know put their own story on which they do a lot of the time but it's not the reality and also you know I want to help other people to know that they're not alone in the feelings they've got and that you can talk to people. It doesn't make you weak to get help, to be vulnerable. It's, uh, there's a lot of strength in that. So to come out and to, to share my story, I'm, I'm happy to do it. So it started, I had a, I mean, it's been going on for a long time. I think without me realizing it, the things I was doing to numb, the feelings I had, I mean, I didn't realize I was doing it for that purpose, um, whether it be drinking or whatever. I think they're, they're things a lot of people do, but if you abuse it and use it in the wrong way and you're not actually doing it for the pleasure, you're doing it to try and chase something or hide from something, it can obviously damage you a lot. So it started with that. Um, and then I, was, I got addicted to sleeping tablets. 
And it's uh, probably a problem that, you know, not only I have, I think it's something that's going around more than people realise. Uh, in the game? In football, yeah. I think it's, you know, something that maybe hopefully me coming out and speaking about it can help people. Because, don't get me wrong, they work, I think. You know, with our schedule, you have a game, you have to be up early in the morning to train, you've got all the adrenaline and stuff, so sometimes, you know, to take a sleeping tablet to sleep and be ready for the next day is fine. But when your dopamine system and you're as broken as I am, um, it can obviously have the reverse effect because it does work for the problems you want to deal with. And that's, that is the problem. It works until it doesn't. So, yeah, I definitely abused them too much. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, I would stop. I would stop sometimes and, you know, go a few months without them. But I was never really dealing with the problem, you know, it got really bad at some point and I didn't understand how bad it was. Um, but I was never dealing with the root of the problem, which was when I was growing up, the, you know, the traumas I had, the feelings I was holding on to. But can you just tell us about your childhood? Uh, something I haven't really spoke about that much, to be honest. I mean, I think there was a few incidents that can give you kind of a brief understanding. So, at six, I was molested by my mum's friend, who was at the house a lot. So my mum was an alcoholic. Uh, and then... <sighs> Sorry. You don't be uh, sorry. Yeah, so that happened at six. And then I was sent to Africa to learn discipline. Um, and then I was sent back. Seven, I started smoking. Eight, I started dealing drugs. Selling drugs? Selling drugs, yeah. <laughs> so that was eight. Eleven, I was hung off a bridge. By who? Uh, a guy from the next estate, a man. And then, yeah, 12 hours adopted, so. And from then, it was like, I was adopted by an amazing family, like I said. I couldn't have asked for better people to to do what they'd done for me as, I mean, I don't, if God created people, it was them, you know, they were amazing. Um, do you still speak to dad now? No, so there was a time he tried, so he went missing for a while. And then, I mean, he's probably gonna come out now and say some some shit, but uh, yeah, so he went missing. And then when I started playing for England, he, <laughs> he came back. And then I used to speak to my mum as well, just to try and help her. Do you not speak to your mum anymore now? No, so when I was 18, around 18, I think, they went to the newspaper and like, started accusing the family that adopted me of doing all this stuff when they didn't know what they had like they were the ones that used to make me go and see my mum I never wanted to go they would always tell me she's your mum like you should have a relationship with her blah, blah, blah. and I think that spoke volumes like what they were were doing they were just doing it generally because they're amazing people so yeah and then my mum and my blood mum and dad went to the press saying that these people are taking advantage of me they want they want to go through my contracts and I hadn't spoke to him for years and I knew that wasn't my mum's decision because I know she didn't really leave Milton Keynes like there was no way she'd done that yeah. um so yeah after that I just felt so betrayed and let down and hurt that I, I just couldn't keep the relationship with my mum. Uh, words um, like lazy were used by Jose Mourinho yeah. and then obviously there was the sort of one-on-one -on -one that he had with you which was one of the sort of most fascinating parts of that documentary where he talked about reaching your potential and that you've you know don't just deliver in moments how did you feel about that sort of if you like exposure and the type of exposure because I mean the idea of being called lazy I worked with you obviously mm. with England that word wasn't in existence around you at all at that period mm. I mean you were box to box full of energy gone on Get I'm up. glad you asked me about that um so that lazy comment, people love to bring that up. That interview, obviously I was on Amazon. He took, called me lazy, that was the day after recovery day. A week later, he apologized to me for calling me lazy because he'd seen me actually train and play. 
but that wasn't in the documentary and no one spoke up about that because so Jonesy apologised for, for calling you lazy in the team meeting that, but, not in, in the team meeting he called me lazy but, but then one on one I think it was on the pitch he, he apologised apologized. for it and I didn't think anything of it at the time because I know in myself I'm not lazy is there anything else that you'd like to say obviously today is sort of what I've heard is it, like I say it's unbelievably shocking Porra, rapaziada, então esse foi o vídeo aí, comentem o que vocês gostaram, comentem ideias para vídeo, beleza? Espero que vocês tenham gostado muito, não se esqueça de deixar o like, beleza? Comenta bastante, compartilha, se inscreva no canal e ative as notificações, beleza? Vídeo todos os dias aí no canal, então entra no canal, dá uma olhada aí que vocês não vão se arrepender, beleza? Então valeu, muito obrigado e até a próxima.